Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss. And the Marvel Cinematic Universe's future villains are a true empty slate, other than like a team of fake news VFX artists and a pile of dust in the shape of Thanos. But there is one villain who many argue never got his proper due, Eltron. Since his apparent destruction at the hands of Vision, many have speculated that the AI presence may still be alive. Nestled into our webcams, taking notes. And now that Vision, last we saw, is a gray husk gathering rest in the Wakandan jungle, could we be going by dodgeball rules here? Does that mean Ultron's back? In? Well, recently Marvel Studios released a trailer for the Avengers Damage Control VR game, which features a parallel storyline to the MCU and the voices of the MCU actors, including Letitia Wright as Shuri, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange, Evangeline Lilly as Wasp, Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, and it sounds like Tom Holland as Spider-Man and James Spader as Ultron, or voice actors who do very good impersonations. A powerful threat has resurfaced. I sense that this force has been waiting, rebuilding its strength in secret until now. Are you guys the new recruits? You fail to see the big picture. Now, to be clear, this game isn't confirmed to be MCU canon. It's just a high stakes hypothetical scenario to help you feel like a badass and sure you designed armor as you fight alongside the Avengers. But the return of Ultron alongside the voices of the other Avengers is a big deal because this arrives after a long history of clues, Easter eggs, loose ends that have been hinted that Ultron could still be alive throughout the MCU film since Age of Ultron, waiting, rebuilding his strength in secret. I'm gonna explain all those details and the crazy ways Marvel could actually bring Ultron back in this special update episode of Inside Marvel. Okay, let's begin by returning to the final act of Avengers Age of Ultron. This is right after Ultron, having hijacked a Quinjet, tried to kill Hawkeye and that kid, but Quicksilver intercepted the fire and dropped dead. Hulk jumped into the Quinjet, tossed Ultron out. Oh, for God's sake. Scarlet Witch finds Ultron and rips his heart out of his chest. Then when the Sokovia chunk blows up and falls to Earth, Ultron walks up in a new drone body and chats with Vision, leading to this fascinating chat about humanity from the perspective of two androids. Humans are odd. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't be. It ends with Vision using the Mind Stone to blast Ultron, which we see from a distance. Now, it's worth noting that Ultron throughout this film is a disembodied consciousness who hops around among various drone bodies. The way you know which drone is Ultron at any given moment is the red glowing eyes. They're all Ultron, technically, but the red eyes equals Spader, which made it quite interesting a few years later in Spider-Man Homecoming, when Spider-Man, trapped in the storage facility, rummaged through Adrian Toomes' stolen tech to find an Ultron head with glowing red eyes. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, Peter, it is awesome, because while this Easter egg might have just been thrown in as a joke, this is the MCU, where every Easter egg is a future plot point. But how could Ultron have survived? I will dig into how. But before I continue, thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this episode. Raid is the brand new free-to-play collection RPG game that will knock your socks off. Or if you're not wearing socks, you can put them on and it will knock them off. It's got this awesome fully voiced story campaign and over 400 champions across 16 heroic factions that you can collect and customize. Just look how insanely detailed these champions are. I like this lady. She's got her, like, sneeze guard there. As you know, it's flu season. It's always good to have something covering the mouth. And both she and her friend have this, like, mist thing going on, you know, to keep the air humid. You know, hey, this guy's got some, like, a Spider-Man pattern going on in his armor. Everybody can be a fan. Raid is growing super fast, with almost 10 million players worldwide who have downloaded the game in less than six months. And you don't have to take it from me, there are more than 380,000 reviews and almost a perfect score in the Play Store. The game's highly anticipated Faction Wars feature is now live, and there's a new great rewards program for new players. You can get a daily login reward for the first 90 days in the game. So what are you waiting for? Go down to the description, click on the special links to download Raid, and you will instantly get 100,000 silver and a free epic channel champion, Lightsworn. Looks cool, yeah? And some amazing ratings there. But this package will only be available for 30 days. So good luck, and I'll see you there. Okay, back to how Ultron could have survived. Rewatching Age of Ultron, some have pointed out the moment an Ultron drone flies into Nick Fury's helicarrier. Fury and Maria Hill put it down, but the drone could have had time to implant a virus in Fury's server and have part of its consciousness lay dormant as a contingency in case he lost his battle, which he did. From there, Ultron could have lived on in spare parts. And box 
boxes of scraps in storage. And when Avengers HQ got demolished in the Battle of Earth and Endgame, those parts got littered across upstate New York without Tony Stark alive to make sure they were disposed of properly. And in the final moments of Endgame, we even saw helicopters lifting cargo away from the battlefield. Who the hell are those guys? Where are they going? Is the pilot an android? We don't know. Another way Ultron could still be alive is through the vessel that he always intended to live on through. E-Vision. Vision's body was designed to be an Ultron 2.0, a perfect, godly, unbeatable specimen. But Ultron's AI download was interrupted, with Stark and Banner later downloading Jarvis's AI into the body instead to create Paul Bettany Vision. But the anatomy and makeup of Vision hasn't really been that clear. Like Infinity War, it wasn't clear how much of his soul was in the Mind Stone, or in Jarvis's AI, or in his vibranium atom-infused flesh. Some of us believe he has no soul. But he is at least part Ultron. It's interesting that Ultron's death via Vision happens from a distance. Now, we don't know exactly what goes down when Ultron leaps at him. The closest we ever get to an Ultron corpse is the head that Spider-Man pulls out of that duffel bag. If Ultron isn't living on in boxes of scraps, what if Vision absorbed whatever was left of Ultron's essence, trapping him inside his head as a prisoner to protect him from getting out, and from there forward just doing his best to ignore the voice of James Spader as he went about his business, making pepper cash, fighting in airports, and jet-setting with Wanda around Scotland. Remember that Ultron always seemed to have a soft spot for Wanda Maximoff. If you stay here, you'll die. And it isn't until after Wanda rips his heart out that her new rebound heart, Vision, swoops in to romantically cradle her, as if he's picking up right where Ultron left off. And in Ultron and Vision's final conversation, they recognize each other's parallel existences. I suppose we are both disappointments. <laughs> I suppose we are. Perhaps all the human complexes that evolve inside Vision's head from there forward are actually manifestations of Ultron's presence in his mind, his affection for Wanda, the way he tried to imprison and control Wanda like a doll in a dollhouse, his misfire that almost killed Rhodey, if it was even a misfire, his haunting nightmares that he discussed at the beginning of Infinity War, probably narrated by Spader's silky smooth taunts. And as Ultron warned Wanda in Age of Ultron, when the Earth starts to Settle. God throws a stone at it. So does Vision warn Wanda a few years later when talking about his stone. It's as if it's speaking to me. Remember, after Thanos ripped out that stone at the end of this film, we never saw what happened with Vision's android body. Wanda dusted away, and there appeared to be no burial for Vision, which makes sense, he had no soul. Androids do not get funerals. But the VFX artist behind Spider-Man Far From Home recently revealed that when looking for visual references to animate zombie Iron Man and Mysterio's illusion sequence, they resurrected, in a sense, the precise designs of Ultron, the way he and his drones' amputated bodies relentlessly dragged themselves forward, refusing to die. Could these frame store artists, who work on many of the Marvel films, including Endgame, have a similar visual in the works for Ultron's resurrection? Picture it, a headstone for Vision, an android arm bursting from the earth, and a gray Vision head, but with glowing red Ultron eyes. There are no strings on me. How do you think Ultron could return in the MCU? Comment down below with your thoughts and help free me from this temporary blue dungeon into a new home to make these Marvel deep dives even better by becoming a patron of New Rockstar's Digital Studios, where you can get early access to videos and an exclusive monthly breakdown. For all these details, just check out the link below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVOS. Thank you for joining me, and believe me, I know what James Spader's voice in your head sounds like, because uh, he's always been up there. Oh. Mm -hmm.